Hello ladies and gentlemen, Security Wolf here bringing you another Minecraft World War II vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and doing a redesign for the Karl Garot. The Karl Garot, also known as the Moser Karl, was a World War II German self-propelled siege mortar designed and built by Rheinmetall. It uh, was able to have a wider range of uh, heaviness in types of munition. Uh, all shells were 60 centimeters in diameter and the shells could range from 4,780 pounds. Uh, to the lightest shell being uh, 2,760 pounds. <laughs> Either way, those are two massively huge shells. Anyways, the range of the uh, gun itself was just over 10 kilometers or 6.2 miles. Each gun had to be accompanied by a crane, a two-piece heavy transport set of rail cars, and several modified tanks to carry shells. Between our, uh, Seven guns were built in total, six of which saw combat between 1941 and 1945. It was uh, used in attacking the Soviet fortresses of brest lvovsk and uh, Sevastopol, uh, bombarded Polish resistance fighters in Warsaw and participated in the Battle of the Bulge, and was used to, to try to destroy the Lunderdorf Bridge during the Battle of Regmenden. Uh, one Karl Garot has survived and the remainder were scrapped after the war. Overall, this is a very interesting uh, vehicle and kind of goes with the German idea of building big guns on uh, mobile platforms. Uh, you know, cough, cough, the uh, Skver Gustav, which, uh, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> but anyways, a uh, really interesting vehicle, and as I mentioned, this is a redesigned build. So uh, I have done a tutorial for this in the past. However, this is going to be a redesign for that to basically, you know, modify it and redo it, add some more detail, and just overall bring the vehicle up to the standards that I like to have the vehicle at. Uh, basically, the... Uh, Garot is an awesome artillery piece and uh, just a really cool uh, piece. Even though it didn't see too much service, uh, it definitely can be a cool uh, vehicle to have in the back of any kind of battle scenes or anything you got going on. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the vehicle, see exactly what we're rebuilding in this tutorial. And um, yeah, just get a good general look at what we got going on here. So, starting off with, we obviously have the tracks here. So, we got all the road wheels, tracks itself. This thing was self propelled. Um, however, there were, uh, to transport over long distances, two rail cars that would be able to carry this thing. Um, I actually kind of want to do the version with the rail cars because I think it looks pretty cool. And we do have a train that I built for the uh, Skiver Gustav, so that would be cool to kind of link the two together. Um, anyways, we have uh, the detail and all on the front here, uh, a couple ladders to get up on the top, some uh, platforms on both sides for crew to, uh, you know, maintenance the gun or to, for... Uh, operating and uh, you know aiming and all that fun stuff uh, lots of little details here stuff like that the main gun itself um, so a really big a wide gun obviously uh, you know 600 millimeters definitely huge um, and then on the back here we also have a uh, opening here of the breach for us for uh, the shells to be loaded on and the shells were interesting they kind of sat on a platform here and then they had this back um, mechanism that kind of pushed the shells into place Obviously, the shell weighing up to, you know, 4,000 or almost 5,000 pounds, they had to uh, use something to push that in because there's no way they're getting that shell in by just pushing it by hand. Um, and then, you know, all the little details and stuff like that all the way around it. Uh, usually, a company this vehicle would be a munitions Panzer IV, which would be able to use a crane it had on it to load the shells um, onto the platform up here for them to be able to fire the gun. Um... That is something I have done a tutorial on before, and I do plan on redesigning that, so hopefully I'll get a redesign out for that uh, sometime soon. And as I mentioned before, I also want to do the rail cars and maybe a few other different um, support vehicles that would kind of accompany this. Um, I kind of got to do some research and figure out what other kind of, um, you know, ammunition carrying vehicles would help would help uh, in terms of this, but obviously it would probably be transported by boxcar or something, so... Anyways, uh, that's going to pretty much do it for this uh, overview for the Karl Grot. Let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first set of layers, layers 0 through uh, 1. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving on to our first uh, set of layers, we're going to be going ahead and working on layers 0 for 1. To go ahead and get started here, we're going to place down a uh, nether brick slab. This is going to be the right uh, front here of the vehicle with the tracks. We then want to place down a narrow brick top slab, or sorry, my bad, a narrow brick stair coming off that slab to wherever direction you want the front of the vehicle facing, followed by a narrow brick top slab coming off the back of that stair. 
Once that's done, we're going to grab ourselves stone brick top subs. We're going to go and place down stone brick top subs coming off these three blocks. We're going to place down one, two, and three stone brick top subs over one, two, and three, and one, two, and three over here as well. And then also going toward the front here, we're going to place down a row three like that toward the front. Um, after that's done there, we're going to place down a polished andesite block over here, followed by a row of three of stone brick top subs across. And that will be kind of a pattern that we'll be continuing on a little bit later. Let's just focus on the tracks to, be, to continue on. We then want to place down a nether brick block uh, in the ground like this, followed by a lever coming off this polished andesite block like that, an iron frame, and a polished andesite block in that uh, iron frame like that for the side there and for our road wheels. We're going to be going ahead and placing down a uh, total of eight of these polished andesite blocks here. Uh, we already have one, so we're going to go and do seven more. I'm just going to go ahead and real quickly space them out by one and go and have and go until I have a total of eight of these polished andesite blocks, all spaced up a total of one. In the spaces in between these blocks, we're going to go and take nether brick blocks and place them down in the ground, kind of embedded down like this. And we're going to do this all the way down like that. Once that's done, we're going to place down a nether brick slab, nether brick stair, and nether brick top slab coming off the back of that stair. We then want to go and take our stone brick top slabs, go to the side of the stair, place down one, two, and three stone brick top slabs over. And then we just want to go and fill in the space in the middle here with stone brick top slabs like this going all the way down. Then we're just going to fill this in completely here, our rows, and this will create the base of our vehicle, which we'll be working on uh, and adding to for future layers. Uh, but yeah, just like that so far. We then want to go ahead and go to these polished andesite blocks, and on the sides of these blocks, going toward the back here, we're going to go and place down levers like this all the way down. And this block we can't because we have the narrow brick slab here, obviously, so we're just going to leave that alone. Uh, we then want to take iron frames, place them down on all these polished andesite blocks. And in these iron frames, we're going to place down a polished andesite block like this all the way down. Once uh, that's finished there, we're going to take the same design for the tracks and copy it over to the air side. So uh, we're going to place down a narrow brick slab here, narrow brick stair, narrow brick top slab coming out the back of the stair, polished dance side blocks, give a space, polished dance side block, you know the drill here. We're just going to copy the same thing we did on the air side there. Uh, we're then going to take narrow brick blocks, replace the ground blocks like this in between the polished dance side blocks, again with uh, narrow brick to kind of fill in the space there, show that track continuing uh, back toward the rear. Narrow brick slab on the back here, narrow brick stair, and narrow brick top slab coming off the back of that stair. We then want to go and take some levers, and we want to place down levers coming off the sides of these polished andesite blocks going all the way down here, like that. We're going to take iron frames, place iron frames on the sides here of these polished andesite blocks as well, all the way down like this, and then polished andesite blocks in the iron frames like so, and like this all the way down the side there. And once we have that all complete, that is going to wrap up layer uh number uh one and or basically there's zero for one my bad and uh with that we can go ahead and get started and move on to our next layer just make sure that you have whatever direction you want the vehicle facing is the stone brick top steps to stick out by one up here um on the back here you can see it's a little bit different so do make sure that you know what direction you want your gun facing but other than that let's go ahead and move into our next layer layer two all right guys moving on to our next layer we have layer number two for layer two to begin with, we're going to place down a polished andesite block on top of this stone brick top slab. We then want to place down a stone brick upside down stair to both sides of that polished andesite block. We then want to go ahead and place down a dark oak wood fence gate that's going to come off the side of this stone brick stair like this to the side and same thing over here, just like this. Once that's finished there, we're going to place down a skeleton skull that's going to come off these two dark oak wood fence gates and a skeleton skull come off this polished andesite block. Once uh, that's all done there, we're going to place down a row of three of polished andesite blocks across narrow brick stair here on both sides uh, just like that. Uh, with that all done there we're going to take our polished andesite blocks we're going to place down a row of five across followed by a item frame on both sides here with a cobweb in it for the sprocket wheel and we also want to go and grab ourselves a stone button and place down a stone button on this polished andesite block as well like that to go and complete the design here on the side. With uh, that all finished there we're going to take our uh, polished andesite blocks we're going to place down a row of three across the middle here followed by a stone brick slab to both sides. We also want to go ahead and grab, grab ourselves a sign and we're going to place a sign on the side here of these two slabs. With that done we're going to place down a row of three of polished andesite basically going down the remaining length of the middle section here so just along all these stone brick top slabs. We're just going to take our polished andesite fill the whole space in toward the back here. All the way back here like this and uh, we won't there's no real interior for this thing so uh, 
you know, we're going to, we're not going to be even uh, attempting anything like that. So we're just going to take it back to this point right here. Now, right before we get to this uh, row here, we want to go and stop. We don't want to fill the row in over here. This last row of stone brick top steps as we do have a little bit of stuff to put on that. Instead of doing just polished andesite, we're going to place down two stone slab full blocks and then a stone brick up down stair, stair here to the right side. We then want to place down a stone button over here to the left uh, stone slab block and a lever like that coming off the stone slab block there in the middle. With that all done, we can go ahead and now focus in on our tracks. So for these, we're going to place down a stone brick stair like this, followed by another stair facing this stair like that. We're going to place down a stone brick slab, stone brick stair, stone brick stair facing this, this uh, stair right here. And this is going to be kind of an alternating pattern here. Stone brick slab, stone brick stair, stone brick stair facing it, stone brick slab, stone brick stair, uh, stone brick stair facing it, stone brick slab, stone brick stair, stone brick stair facing it, and a uh, stone brick slab, followed by a uh, stone brick uh, stair like this. Now, when you get to this point here, we're going to go and then grab ourselves a light gray shulker box, place down a light gray shulker box coming off this uh, stone uh, stone block like that. We want to go ahead and grab ourselves an item frame. We're going to place down an item frame coming off the uh, shulker box and also in the uh, block itself, or in, a, or in the item frame itself, we're going to place down a light gray stained glass pane uh, like that. Now, with that all done here, uh, we're going to go ahead and then place down a uh, narrow brick stair on this uh, narrow brick top step here. And we're going to copy the same design here for the tracks just over here to this side. So it's going to be the same alternating pattern going all the way down. Uh, let me just go ahead and grab ourselves an iron frame again because I threw it out. Um, so just like this. And uh, we're going to place down our stone brick stair, slab, stair, stair, slab, stair, stair. Slab and again, if I'm going a little bit faster here, then you can just refer back to the air side where I kind of took a little bit more of a slower approach to it. Uh, it's the same design as the other side, so uh, you know whatever we do over here, you're just going to go ahead and copy over to the or whatever we've done the air side, you're just going to copy over to this side. Anyways, once that's done there, you're going to go ahead and have that all complete, and you'll have uh, layer two all complete. Once that's out of the way, we can go ahead and move, go ahead and move on to our next layer, layer number three. Alright guys, so moving on to our next layer, we're going ahead and moving on to layer uh, 3. So for layer 3, we're going to place down a polished andesite block on top of this one right here, followed by a stone brick up down stair to both sides of this polished andesite block. When that's all done there, we're going to place down a iron trap door, come off the side of these two stone brick up down stairs. With that out of the way, come off those uh, iron trap doors, we're going to place down a narrow brick fence post going toward the front here, and then a narrow brick fence post come off this polished andesite block like that as well in the front. Once that's done there, we're going to take our polished andesite, we're going to place down a row of three across the middle section here, and we're going to take these rows of three of polished andesite and just take this all the way toward the back of the vehicle. So just like we did before, we're going to go ahead and go all the way back and stop on the last row. Uh, so again, just filling in the middle space like this, all the way back here to this point here. At this point back here, we're going to take our uh, stone slab blocks, we're going to place down there uh, two stone slab blocks like this, followed by a stone brick up down stair. We then also want to go ahead and place down a lever on this stone slab block in the middle here, followed by a uh, lever, the lever that's flicked downwards, and the stone button over here on the left side. Over here on the side here for the tracks and along the side, we're going to go ahead and start off by placing down a uh, iron trap door, or two iron trap doors coming off this polished andesite block. Once that's done, we're going to place down a black carpet on top of this polished andesite block here, followed by a iron trap door back. We then want to place down a second black carpet, followed by again another iron trap door back. So just like that. Uh, once that's done there, we're going to take our uh, narrow brick slabs. We're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 narrow brick slabs back, followed by 1 and 2 black carpets toward the rear there. Uh, with that all done and out of the way, we're going to go ahead and then switch back to iron trap doors. We're going to place down 1. Uh, two and three iron trap doors back like that um, and with that all uh, done there that's going to pretty much wrap up what we're going to be doing on the sides we're going to go ahead and go to the same side over here and take our iron trap doors and do practically the same thing at the front here so again uh, you know I'm going to be going a little bit faster here you can refer to the air side to make sure we do it right we have that row with six here iron trap doors two black carpets for the tracks a row of one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen 
uh, narrow brick slabs back, and then two black carpets like that to wrap it up toward the end here. Now also uh, toward the back here, uh, we do have one difference over here on the right side, and that is actually going to be uh, taking this black carpet, breaking it, and in its place placing down a dark oak and fence gate, open it up toward the uh, stone brick ups and down stair, and then placing down a skeleton skull coming off that dark oak and fence gate. With that done and out of the way, that's going to pretty much wrap up uh, layer 3, and with that we can move on to our next layer, layer 4. Alright guys, moving on to our next layer, we go ahead and move on to layer number 4. For layer 4, we're going to go ahead and place down a polished dance block here in the middle, followed by a stone brick up and down stair here to both sides. Once that's done, we're going to place down a narrow brick fence post coming off that polished dance block there in the middle. To both sides, we're going to go ahead and place down a cobblestone wall on top of those two iron trap doors, followed by a skeleton skull coming off that cobblestone wall toward the front there. Um, once that's all finished there, behind these uh, stone brick stairs and all that stuff, that row right there, we're going to place down a row of 3 of polished dance blocks across. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a gray carpet. Uh, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a gray carpet, place down a gray carpet like this, a light gray carpet, I should say. And then a narrow brick fence post on top of the iron tra trap door to the side. Same thing over here on this side as well. With that all done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a, uh, or actually, we're going to go ahead and replace this middle polished dance block with a stone slab full block. We then want to go and take the same row right here in the middle, do the same thing. So, a polished dance block on both sides, stone slab block there in the middle. Uh, we're then going to place down an iron trap door coming off this uh, narrow brick fence post like that to the side. We then want to go and go ahead and place down a narrow brick fence post pack like this on both sides. In the middle space again, a stone slab block in the middle, polished dance side block to both sides, and also two light gray carpets along the sides here as well. So, just like that for our catwalks. Um, again, continuing on, we're going to place down a narrow row of three of polished dance side across right here, followed by another iron trap door come off this narrow brick fence post. Once that's done there, we're going to place down a uh, polished dance side block in the middle here, cobblestone wall to both sides, and then a uh, light gray carpet again, two light gray carpets here filled in those space over the tracks there like so. Uh, again, going ahead and continuing on, on the sides, we're going to place down a narrow brick fence post on both sides. We also want to go and place down a row of three of polished dance side across, light gray carpet, again on both sides and then a iron trap door coming off that narrow brick fence post. Uh, with that all done we're going to take our polished dance side blocks place down a uh, narrow row of three across the midsection like this. We're going to grab ourselves a stone brick slab place down a stone brick slab coming off both sides of this uh, row of three of polished dance site and then just place down an end rod that is going to uh, come off of this fence post that's going to be right here. So real quick one quick adjustment we're actually going to move this fence post back one on both sides and then in between the fence posts we should have two iron trap doors. So your rails should look something like this. We have a narrow brick fence post, iron trap door, narrow brick fence post, two iron trap doors, a narrow brick fence post like that. Um, with that all out of the way, we're going to go and then place down an end rod coming off these two narrow brick fence posts like that on both sides. Uh, we can then go and switch to polished anti blocks here. Uh, which we're going to go and place down a row three across the middle section like this, followed by a stone brick stair, like so, coming off this stone brick slab on both ends, like that. Once that's done there, on the back of the stone brick stair, we're going to place down an iron trap door on both sides. And now we want to switch to uh, our polished anisite. site. We're just going to place down a row of five across, followed by a second row of five, a third row, a fourth row, a fifth row, a sixth row, a seventh row, and we're going to stop at seven rows of five going on along the sides here. And all along these seven rows, we're going to go and place down uh, iron trap doors on both ends, like this on the top portion of the block for again our catwalks. Same thing over here along the sides, like that. Once that's all finished, there we're going to go and then place down a row three of, of polished anisite across the middle here, and rod to come off these two polished anisite blocks. Continuing on, we're going to place down a row three polished dance blocks across followed by an anvil on both ends uh, like so. After that stuff we're going to go ahead and place down two rows of three the polished dance going back. We're going to take some acacia wood planks place down one and two acacia wood planks back. Same thing over here one and two. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and go to the back here place down a stone brick up down stair followed by two polished dance blocks over to the side of it. Uh, we're going to go and then grab ourselves a Wither Skeleton Skull, place down two Wither Skeleton Skulls coming off those uh, acacia wood planks. Once that's done, we're going to go and take Iron Trap Doors, place down one, two, three, four, and five back. And then we're going to go and go and, uh, over to this side and do the same thing. One, uh, two, three, four, and five back. 
Um, so they should be in line with these two nerve break or these two wither skeleton skulls on both ends. Now with that complete there, we're gonna go ahead and take our um, iron trap doors. We're gonna place down one, one more back, followed by one over like this. And over here on this side, we're just gonna place down one iron trap door and then a narrow brick fence post on top of the skeleton skull. So the right side's a little bit different there, uh, but looking at it from here, you can kind of see the difference real easy and clearly. Anyways, that right there is going to do it for layer number four. With that, let's go ahead and move on to layer number five. All right, guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five, what we want to do to begin with is we're going to go ahead and start off by placing down a wither skeleton skull on top of these two cobblestone walls, just like that. Once that's done there, we're going to place down a uh, end rod on top of this polished anti block right here, followed by a narrow brick fence post on top of this one like that. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a black carpet, place down a black carpet on top of this narrow brick fence post, and also black carpet on top of this end rod. Once that's done there, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone button on this stone uh, slab full block, followed by a redstone repeater here to both ends like that. We then want to place down an additional stone button on this stone slab full block, followed by again a redstone repeater on both sides like that. Uh, once that's all done, we're going to then place down a skeleton skull on top of these two polished anzite blocks. So right here, leaving a space in middle, in the a space of one in the middle, in the middle space in between these skeleton skulls, we're going to place down an end rod, followed by an additional end rod to both sides like that. Uh, once that's all done, we're going to go and take our stone brick slabs. We're going to place down a row of three of stone brick slabs across here, followed by a skeleton skull on both ends of uh, this uh, this row of stone brick slabs here. Once uh, that's done, we're going to go ahead and place down a cobblestone wall in the middle. We're going to place down a stone brick upside down stair to both sides of this uh, cobblestone wall. And then we just want to place down an additional stone brick stair out to the side. So we have a row of two coming off the cobblestone wall to both ends like that. Uh, with that done there, we're going to go ahead and take our polished andesite blocks. We're going to place down a row of three across the middle here, followed by a dark oak wood fence gate coming off both ends of this row of three. Uh, we then want to place down an additional row of three of polished DSA blocks again across the middle here. We're going to then place down a stone brick stair on top of this stair right here on both ends like that. Uh, going ahead and continuing on, we're going to place down a row of three of stone brick stairs or, stone, or polished DSA blocks across, followed by a stone brick upside down stair on both sides here. Uh, we're going to place down a narrow row of three of polished DSA across and there's stone brick upside down stair on both sides. Make sure you pay attention to the direction you're placing these stairs because they should look something like this. Also, real quick, before we continue moving on toward the back there, I want to go ahead and go to the rails real quick and take black carpet and place them down on top of these narrow brick fence posts and iron trap doors along the side here for the rails. And same thing over here as well as I kind of forgot to uh, do that. So we're going to go ahead and throw that on real quick. Um, anyways, once that's complete there, we're going to go ahead and continue on uh, back to this section here. So after this uh, section here, we're going to place down a narrow row of three of polished dance that across, followed by another stone brick upside down stair, this time facing this stair like so. We're then going to place down a narrow row of three of polished dance that across, followed by another stone brick upside down stair on both sides. Once that's done, we're going to go and take our polished dance site. Uh, we want to go and place down a polished dance site block here on both sides, leaving a space in the middle. We're going to go ahead and then go back from these polished dance site blocks, place down one more polished dance site block going back, followed by a stone brick stair on both uh, ends like this, and then a cobblestone wall in the middle in between those stone brick stairs. Now, uh, going to the sides real quick, uh, we're going to take our iron uh, trap, or sorry, uh, gray carpet. We're going to place down a row of three of gray carpet across. Same thing over here, uh, just like that. When uh, that's all done and out of the way, uh, we want to go ahead and then take our narrow brick fence post and we're going to go ahead and do the rail real quick. So for this, we're going to place down a narrow brick fence post, uh, and a iron trap door, narrow brick fence post, iron trap door, narrow brick fence post, iron trap door and basically a repeating pattern all the way down so just like this and it's going to go ahead and go all the way to the back here and end at this point like this now uh once that's done there we're going to do the same thing over on this side so again that alternating pattern just going all the way back or i should say working its way back like this and Continue going all the way toward the back here, like that. Now, with that all finished, uh, we then want to go ahead and go to the middle section here. Place down a row of three or uh, two rows of three of stone slab blocks or stone slabs across, followed by uh, two light gray carpets here on both sides. Once that's done, we're going to take polished anzite blocks. We're going to place down one and two, one and two over here on the left side, and then over here on the right side, we're going to place down one, two, and three stone brick slabs back. 
After that's done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a cobblestone wall on top of these two narrow brick fence posts, just like this. And um, we also want to go ahead and go to uh, this section right here. So next to the stone brick stair, we're going to swap out the space next to the stone brick stair for a cobblestone wall as well. And uh, those will be touched up on a little bit uh, later. But anyways, once uh, that's all complete there, that's going to pretty much sum up layer number five. And with that, we can go ahead and get into our uh, next layer, which is going to be layer number six. All right, guys, so moving on to our next layer, we'll be going ahead and moving on to layer six. However, real quick before we do, I want to go ahead and cover one thing uh, that we need to add on from the previous layer, uh, layer five. So for this, we need to go ahead and actually place down a skeleton skull coming off this cobblestone wall on the back here. And this is only on the right side. Um, I did forget to include that. So let's go ahead and throw that on now. And once you have that added on, we are pretty much good to go. So uh, to go ahead and continue on, we're gonna go and need to go into our creative menu, grab ourselves a iron or an item frame, and also a, uh, I believe it's a light ray, uh, stained glass pane, and also some iron trap doors. We're gonna place down an iron trap door on this stone brick stair here on both sides here, followed by an item frame coming off the side of this um, wooden or this iron trap door, and then the item frame we're gonna place down a light ray, stained glass pane, and that's gonna be the same thing there on both sides. Once that's done, we're going to place down a row of three of polished andesite across this section here. And coming off the middle, polished andesite block, we're going to place down one, two, and three stone brick top slabs going toward the front. We then want to place down a stone brick stair to both ends of this row of three of polished andesite. Going back uh, from this row of three, uh, we're going to place down a narrow row of three of polished andesite across, followed by a stone brick top slab on both ends. We're then going to place down a uh, another row of three of polished andesite across, followed by a cobblestone wall on both ends. After that, we're going to place down a row of three of polished andesite across, followed by again, a stone brick stair on both ends. Uh, we're then going to place down another row of three of polished andesite, followed by again, a stone brick slab on both ends. Coming back to this section here, we're going to place down a polished andesite block in the middle, followed by a stone brick stair on both sides, and then an iron trap door coming off the uh, stone brick stair like that toward the front. We also want to go ahead and go to this cobblestone wall. On both sides, we're going to place down a item frame, and in the item frame itself, we're going to place down a cobweb like this for a little gear here or something like that to turn and uh, maybe turn to uh, kind of elevate the gun. Uh, with that all complete, uh, we're going to go ahead and continue on. Uh, we're going to place down a stone brick upside down stair that's going to come off that polished andesite block like so. We then want to uh, follow it up by placing down a anvil. Uh, or my bad, sorry. Um, we're not going to do that just yet. I was getting uh, one uh, kind of row here ahead of myself. Uh, we're going to place down a row of three of cobblestone walls across this section here. We then want to place down a polished andesite or a stone brick upside down stair coming off this middle cobblestone wall. We then want to place down an anvil on top of that cobblestone wall there. And on both sides of the anvil itself, we're going to place down a wooden sign like that. Once that's done, we're going to place down a narrow polished andesite block that goes back from this anvil, followed by again a sign on both sides of this polished andesite block. We then want to place down a stone brick stair back, followed by a stone brick top slab. And then after that, we're going to place down two iron trap doors back like so. Uh, once that's all finished, uh, we're going to go and take some black carpet. We're going to place down black carpet on top of these narrow brick fence posts and uh, uh, iron trap doors. So this is going to go all the way back here like this to make the rails. And same thing over here on this side as well. Like that. All the way down here for the catwalks. And like so. And then once uh, that's finished there, we're going to go and then grab ourselves some uh, Wither Skeleton Skulls. We're going to place down a Wither Skeleton Skull on top of these cobblestone walls. So like this on the back here. I like this around. And the last thing for us to do after that is to go ahead and grab ourselves some rails and place down one and two rails on these three, or on these two uh, polished dance blocks. Uh, with that all done, that's going to do it for layer number six. And with that, we can go ahead and move on to layer number seven. With that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and move on to our next layer, layer number seven. For layer seven, we're going to go ahead and start off by going ahead and grab ourselves a black wool block. We're going to place it down on top of this polished dance block right here. We then want to take our uh, polished dance blocks, place down one block on boot on your side of this black wool block, and then go out these polished dance blocks. We're going to place down a polished dance block going forward. We're then going to place down two cobblestone walls, and then an air two over here on this side as well. Uh, with that finished there, we're going to go ahead and take our polished andesite blocks, place down a row of three across here, followed by a second row uh, going back. We're going to place down a stone brick upside down stair on top of that cobblestone wall, followed by an end rod coming off that stone brick stair on both ends. We then want to go ahead and then place down a skeleton skull coming off these 
uh, or basically both sides here of this stone brick stair. Uh, in between these skeleton skulls here, we're going to place down a narrow row of three of polished anastasia cross, followed by a third row of, uh, or sorry, uh, yeah, uh, I'll actually tell you it's a fourth row of polished anastasia, but a narrow row of polished anastasia cross with a tripwire hook on both ends. Coming back to this section here, we're going to place down a polished anastasia block here in the middle, stone brick upside down stair on both sides. And actually, uh, in between these stairs, we actually want to go and place down a black wool block like this. Uh, once that's done, going back from these stone brick stairs, we're going to place down a polished anti block on both sides. Now, this section here is kind of up to you guys on how you want to structure this, uh, uh, you know, uh, vehicle. If you want to have it so that the shell is pushed in to the gun and it's getting ready to uh, fire, it's fully loaded, you're going to have this thing extended up forward. Um, however, if you want it to look like the shell just got placed down and is about to get pushed in, uh, like you can see the most extended version that we have right here for this version, you can go ahead and do that. So um, if you are building this thing with the uh, little racking system or the little pusher, whatever you want to call it, thingy bobber we have on the back here, um, if you want to get it, if you want to have it so it looks like it's already pushed the shell in, you can just place down a cobblestone wall or skeleton skull here and kind of just uh, basically build it backwards from this. However, we're going to be going ahead and building this as we have the model right next to us because we have the shell exposed and I think it looks the best out of all, um, you know, other designs we can use. So for this to go ahead and get started here, we're going to go and place down a cobblestone wall that's going to start on this iron trap door here. We then want to place down a skeleton skull coming off the cobblestone wall uh, toward the cannon breach. With that done, we're going to place down a stone brick stair on top of this uh, iron trap door here. And then on both sides of this cobblestone wall, we want to go and place down a dark oak fence gate. So uh, depending on what Minecraft version you're on, you may need to place a block underneath it. Newer versions, you guys are lucky and you can just place it directly onto the cobblestone wall. Uh, but for me, I still need to place down the dark oak fence gates on both sides, but make sure they're opened up so the cobblestone wall looks like that. After that's done, we're going to go and place down a row after the stone brick stair of one, two, three, and uh, we're going to do four cobblestone walls back. We then want to go and place down a sign on both sides of this first cobblestone wall. We're going to place down a, uh, or actually it's going to be a sign on the left side and then a skeleton skull to the right side. After that's done there, we're going to go and place down a dark oak fence gate. Coming off this cobblestone wall here, opened up again toward the wall, uh, like this on both sides. Uh, once that's done here, we're going to place down a skeleton skull on the left side and left side only. And uh, we can then go and take an end rod, place down an end rod that goes down from this uh, skeleton skull. Or sorry, my bad. That goes down from, uh, it should be this right there. So it should be going down from the skeleton skull here. And then we also want to place down an end rod that's going up uh, on top of the skeleton skull like that. And uh, with that all done there, that'll be the kind of uh, push thing that goes forward and will uh, basically push the shell into the breach. Now, if you want to build the shell itself, itself it's a pretty simple design. It's just going to be uh, very simply three uh, green stain clay blocks across, followed by a zombie head on the uh, end there for the tip of the shell. And then we're going to take stone buns and wrap around the two end blocks, end blocks uh, just like that. And it's overall a really simple design and you have yourself the, uh, you know, huge shell that this thing would fire. And uh, again, you can change the format. You can have this thing maybe being pushed part, part of the way in. Whatever you want to do, just make sure that you move this racking system a little bit forward if you do. And, uh, you know, you can go crazy and uh, have some different configurations and stuff like that with it. And, you know, just go crazy. Anyways, that's going to do it for uh, layer uh, number six. With that, let's go ahead and move on to layer number seven. Alrighty guys, so we'll go ahead and move on. Um, I said we're moving on to layer seven, but we just did layer seven. You know, sometimes I lose track of the layer as we're doing it. But anyways, we are now moving on to layer eight. Anyways, to get started here, we're gonna place down a row three of polished andesite that goes across here like this, over the black hole block like that. We then want to take go ahead and place down a row of one, two, and three stone brick uh, slabs coming off the middle polished andesite block. Once that's done there, we're going to go ahead and go back from this row three of polished anti blocks. We're going to place down one, two, three, and four more additional rows. So you have five rows of three like this along the side here. On top of this uh, stone brick upside down stair, we're going to place down a skeleton skull. Same thing over here as well. On uh, both sides of the skeleton skull, we're going to place down two trip bar hooks. Same thing over here. Anyways, with that done, we're going to then place down a stone top slab on both sides here, followed by a sign on the side of these top slabs. Uh, with that done, we're going to then take some snow bricks uh, stairs, uh, place down a row three of snow brick stairs across here. And uh, once that's done, that's going to do it for this uh, main section here. 
that will complete uh, layer number eight. And with that, we'll move on to our final layers, layers nine and 10. So moving on to our last final layers for the build, we're gonna go ahead and move on to layers nine through 10. So for these layers to go ahead and get started here, we're gonna place down a polished anti block on top of this one right here, followed by a stone brick stair here on both sides of it. Coming off the polished anti block in the middle, we're gonna place down a cobblestone wall. Going forward, a sign on both sides and a skeleton skull that's gonna come off that cobblestone wall as well toward the front. After that's done here, we're going to take our polished anti blocks, place down one and two in the middle. And if you want to do like the little writing or show the writing that would be on the side of the or on the top portion of the gun here, you can place down two cord stairs. If you really could care less, you can just go and place down two stone brick stairs, whatever you want to do there. Anyways, we're then going to place down two polished anti blocks back down the middle, two stone brick stairs to both sides of uh, those blocks, just like that. With that done, we're going to then place down a skeleton skull, which I believe is actually supposed to go on both these stone brick uh, stairs. Here on top, so we're gonna place down two uh, skeleton schools on the top there, uh, just like that. And the very last thing for us to do on top is to place down one, two, three, and four, and five iron trap doors like that. And once you have that all complete, that is going to pretty much do it for my new redesign of the Carl Gerut uh, self propelled siege mortar. Overall, really nice redesign for it, um, really makes the build look a lot better, and uh, definitely uh, is a huge improvement over the last one. Hopefully, we can go ahead and get the uh, transport trailers. Uh, the two transport uh, train trailers, I should say, rail cars, and uh, also uh, maybe get into seeing some, uh, you know, new ammunition Panzer design and new ammunition transport vehicles and stuff like that to uh, go along with this to create some kind of cool scene. Anyways, that's going to pretty much uh, some of this uh, video and do it for this tutorial. Uh, hope you guys do enjoy. And if you guys do abuse this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This may think from a sign of the build, tweet to my channel, or this video if this does appear any social media sites. As long as I get proper credit for the build, that's all I ask for in doing these tutorials. It helps my channel grow and it continues to keep me inspired to keep on posting these types of builds. So as long as you guys are able to give me credit for it, uh, then you are free to use it for a project you guys are working on. Other than that, thank you guys all so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Garrett 204, and I'll see you guys next time.